Hello everyone, recently we had a chance to pay a visit to the Deanery. It's a eco-friendly project place where students and uh, local people can pay a visit there to learn about traditional skills and using traditional local materials. It is very interesting to see them combine the technology like solar panels and batteries along with the traditional materials like granite and uh, sandstone as well as wood to build uh, a local infrastructure there. Yes, uh, without further ado, let's uh, jump into the video to see what I have seen there. Yeah. My best case is I saw you have a char EV charging station at the very front. So I know not a lot of people will have that, which means... You're happy about that. Which means technically, if I have a Tesla, I can drive my Tesla here and charging here. <laughs> He's been talking about Teslas a lot. Because I'm a Tesla fanboy. Sorry. But you know what? This was an old Anglican summer camp. It was 75 years in community service. And it came up for sale back in 2011. And it was going to get sold for condo, cottage kind of use. So it was a group of local artists and residents and environmental educators that got together. And we were able to get a long-term loan from somebody that believed in our idea. And we were still paying a mortgage on the place, and it's it was only in eight really, years later. Yeah, and it was in really rough shape when we got it. It was like the roof was off in places, the ceilings were down. It had been wow. boarded up for three years. Work on um, sustainable energy systems, but we do a lot of work around uh, healthy mm. forests as well. So we've got a woodlot that we um, take from very thoughtfully and used for specific things. And then we use the natural building um, pieces of primarily around straw bale construction and earth and cob and, and earth ships as well. And then we use the arts to inform everything that we do as well. So we try and bring the arts into that. I love oh. the bicycle. Uh, bicycle's <laughs> a great example of that because that ties into like our work around community health, for example. So we've got a lot of bike related things and I'm always working with like I work with Nova Scotia Community College and, uh, yeah. and Dalhousie as well so they do some cool bike projects bike powered things yeah I, I heard about the project about the, the tricycle the electric powered tricycle yes yeah which is that's yeah. cool and we have a bike powered smoothie maker over there that you can take a so a little stand over there if I put a smoothie so you have a generator no, it's, a, it's, pu it's purely mechanical. It's purely mechanical. Oh, lovely. Oh, and then I will feel, did I don't have enough muscle power? Do you get a smoothie to charge yourself up with and then you have to make one smoothie? Wow, I'm literally paddling it. Yeah, see? That's how it works. Uh, and uh, wow, it will show how many, oh, how many miles. Yeah. Oops. Miles and miles of smoothies. Yeah, so until now it has already had uh, 361 miles of smoothie. That's quite a lot. That's quite a lot. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Um, and it's purely mechanical, there's nothing electrical here. There's no need to power a generator. Yeah. So we're really interested in DIY things like this. Mm -hmm. Do it yourself, set ways of generating power. And we'd love to see more of these mm -hmm. around. So I'm trying to get, you know, if you ever see one of these. So this is a, a wood stove and it's um, yeah. You, you, get, you burn your fire in here to begin with. You let yeah. the temperature get up to uh, about 250 degrees. And then Fahrenheit. Oh, degree C. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, then, I like SI. I don't like miles because I don't even know how to transfer it to kilometers. <laughs> anyway. That's an old bike. Yeah. Um, then you shut the draft down here and then that forces the gases mm -hmm. that would be, norm would be going up yeah. the chimney down into here. Okay. And then there's a secondary burn that happens down there, so the, the gases are burnt again. Okay, so it actually increases the burning efficiency of the... It, it's radically increased. Yeah. So you get fast radiant heat off of this, yep. 
And then all, once you shut that down, the heat is then transferred into um, a system here that goes... Oh, hot water. Hot, yeah, it's a closed loop system that goes okay. down into the basement. And we okay. have a, a thousand liter tank down there, a really large tank that's like a battery, oh, basically. Oh, glycol. Thermal, thermal storage. Yeah. yeah it's, it's called thermal storage. Very little glycol, but there's some. And so that's the... Test. And it's a smart tank, so you can charge it up using the wood heat or sun or oil. So depending on which system is hmm. in use at that time, it'll, it'll adjust. Yeah. And then there was an existing hot water heat distribution system in here before, so we were able to tap into that and not have to reinstall something new. Um, yeah. Radiators? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Baseboard radiators. Yeah. Baseboard so, radiators. Yeah. It's just not they're not electric; they're hot water. Yeah. So the the deanery is like it's a 25 acre piece of land. So we've got oceanfront fields and the forest. So we're here right now in the hall. And uh, we'll just take a really quick walk around so you can get oriented. Um, it's on this loop here, which is a beautiful, bikeable, super quiet road. And if maybe you've been to Clam Harbor Beach before, no? No, I don't no. get this far very well, often. It's one of the most beautiful mm -hmm. places. In, you know. And then we've got um, 18 acres on the far side of the road, so we can. That's where we've got our woodland walks, and we're using that as art installation places as well. So there's some cool magic moments over there. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna walk you this way. I'll just show you in here. I'm sure you've seen these, but when we go outside. Uh -huh you'll be able to see the solar thermal um, heating system that's outside. Okay. So it's like a, it's the, the, the beer can pot oh, can yeah. type. Yep. And uh, this is what is connected to the interior part. So the cool air comes in there. It has a chance to heat up outside. And then yep. when, so it's, it's when a, the sun is on it, then it puts... So it's wall mounted? Like it's a vertical mount on yeah. the wall? Right. Yeah. Interesting. I spoke to them as one of the companies that I uh, interviewed for the study. I you. Oh, yeah. And you have a very old, out-of-date Mac. Huh? Just this thing will be very valuable for you. It will be? Yeah. 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 So this is our monkey yeah. area. So we've got three rooms like this that we can sleep about 18 people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you if like a solar North Scotia was ever doing like a team a build a retreat or something yeah. like that, this is a good place for that kind of thing. So mm. the sea comes up and Wayne's lab as well is coming up. This is dead. Oh, this is a forced air system. You can see the yeah. cans inside. And then let's blow them back. Let's just help with the magnet. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So when we first got the property before it was reclad, we actually built our own, you know, you can find these online, but it was just like a, a window, a tall window. And we, instead of using the cans, we used baffles that we painted a uh, zigzag of painted black wood mm -hmm. to slow down the air as well. Okay. It does Friction, the same yeah. thing. Not even friction, it's just like slow. Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a actually... Has a chance to heat up. Luckily, I'm a process engineer in my undergrad, so I know what you are exactly doing is actually increasing the surface area. Mm -hmm. For This is eventually an uh, air-to-air heat exchanger, so the larger the surface area, the better. So you want as much surface area as possible, that's why you like cans or baffles. Mm -hmm. This is all increasing surface, surface area. So could increase the residence time of the of the air inside the forced air system which mm. it will heat up way more so yeah. it just These directly blows through That's whereas right. the wood is an insulating material but if you have a lot of convected air in the system then the friction on the surface of the wood would be an advantage it would slow it down as well i mean it's mm. really just like giving it time to heat up yeah and so then it then it gets blown in yeah. at the top so with that was a real i mean you can make those for 10 bucks or so if you what is the name of this thing this is our um bread oven it's a oh, bread and pizza and all kinds of things in here where's and, the firebox and it works um 
Or you just put coals in it? So the way it works is you, you build your fire in there or let it burn for about an hour and a half or so. Then the heat from the fire gets stored in the mass of the oven. And this is just built using local clay-rich soil. Um, then you take out most of the coals and things like that, and all that heat that's been generated is in there, in here, and it radiates heat back and cooks your food. Sure. And uh, so you put your... Is this wood? No, no those are fire bricks. Yeah. So there's ceramic bricks. <clears throat> and it's, a, it's an interesting process to construct this. You, we made Let this one. Shot inside. We used a sand form, so it, create like a sand castle kind of thing. And it's, the dimensions of it are such that it's a two, th two the, the front of it is, it's a cannonary arch and the, the, the door opening is two thirds the height of the highest point of the inside. Yeah. And so it creates this natural convection with the, um, the heat of the, from the fire. So it's very clean. You start your fire in the front here and then you slowly push it back. You don't actually need to have an air a uh, hole it's so even it's in the back. Right. It just mm -hmm. burns natural convection. Force. Like yeah. natural convection. Yeah. You do not need forced convection no. at all. Damn, this looks really like a fire igloo, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's actually igloo. <laughs> igloo style when you see the hexagon. But they made it to look like a turtle. That's they made the, the lovely the turtle door. head, yes. Oh, <laughs> didn't realize. We have a very large field with like uh, small houses distributed all around. So I teach part-time at the architecture school. Okay. I'm not an architect. I come from a natural building and arts background. But I'm a friend in architecture. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so when the students, they come out here yeah. every summer and mm -hmm. when they come out, they get a chance to design and build something, mm -hmm. get outside of the computer world and... Um, oh yeah, they do all the paperwork, which I absolutely... As an engineer, which many people think, oh, you guys just do design works on paper on the computer. I say, I don't like that. I want to do hands-on work and talk to technicians, to talk to sight person, because I think that's the best way and the most practical way to learn mm -hmm. instead of just doing computer works. Yeah. But I know there are so many people. Is this local material? Yeah, so if you see this color, this is our actually uh, like clay from the site or just yeah. up the road. And the other is uh, a silica sand and that's local but uh, been processed somewhat and then a kaolin clay. Mm -hmm. um, below it there's um, a red clay, uh, not, I think it's a shaw brick clay that was below it and that's precipitating through the, through so, the kaolin clay. So that is clay? These are all clay walls. Yeah. Okay. So this is a little truth window we call them, and oh, uh, so when the when the students are here, I introduce them to as many different kinds of okay. building systems as possible. So, so they have wood. They have. Wood. No. So so just a second. I'm going to give you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this wall here, it's yeah. it's really thick, deep. So this is a straw bale wall. This is um, straw bales stacked up and plastered over. Mm -hmm. And then over here, the truth window that you're looking at here, this is uh, hempcrete, so mm -hmm. it's industrial hemp mm -hmm. mixed with lime and packed into forms. Mm -hmm. And then I spoke to a business that's recently involved with that as well, Nova Scotia, you probably know of them, but I'm trying to remember who it was. And then above it, there's light straw clay, so that's chopped straw mixed with a, a clay slip and then tossed like a big salad, really, and then just packed into forms. The salad, I noticed it at the Ecology Action Centre that, you know, their walls have a, a clay treatment of some sort, a paint. Yes, sure. I was involved the, with all that. The air quality is really good. Quite noticeable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the clay, if you've worked with clay, then you'll know that it, it will take up moisture and then release it back out into the... Uh, Oh, yes. Here, that so it's the center of my universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a very yeah. for for a condition like this, we have like a very big dry and the wet change. It is important to keep the like humidity indoor. 
Like that's the best way to actually keep the humidity indoor stable. Mm -hmm. And uh, that can actually somehow protect the wood structure as well because it, wood is very sensitive to moisture, right? Yeah, it helps. It creates an equilibrium for yeah. the for the wood. Anyway, this is our artist in residence space. It's also being used a bit like a um, an Airbnb. Ooh, I so. probably should uh, give my friend in architecture a message about this place, uh, <laughs> so he can probably pay a visit here next summer okay <laughs> well he will graduate uh, in may or june so in which program architecture the this is our um brush fence so this is used for uh keeping deer out and this is our acadian tree nursery mm -hmm. so we um we have some examples of all the different acadian tree species but we have one here and then another one down below in the shade mm -hmm. And uh, brush is something that gets burned usually, so we want to show that you can actually use it for other things. This compresses down, but um, we're going to be rebuilding this one up again to about eight feet in a couple of weeks. So would a deer not come in here because they wouldn't get, want to get trapped? That's, they don't like to not be able to see what's in front of them. So if they can't, I didn't believe it, but... We haven't had a deer problem here. <laughs> it's like I see apple tree written there. So well, there's all kinds of del delicious things in here, and we have deer definitely around. I'm sure. But they um, they haven't. They could obviously now just jump over it now that this this part Boy, came down. But and we're also using it as an armature for growing. We're turning it into a living fence so that we've got hawthorn, hops, and willow planted around it. So as it compresses down. Those um, plants will, will turn into a... To be honest, it reminds me of an old computer game I played where in the map I need to go circling around multiple times before I can get into the center. <laughs> it's exactly like that feeling. Well, in the game it's way larger though, but... <laughs> yeah, the design is pretty similar, I would say. And uh, this is uh, a yeah. We have a, a living roof. And what is uh, on the top of the roof? Like what kind of material? You'll see inside. That's part of. Um, it's called the, the shielding. Mm -hmm. And uh, this head was built. One of the students that was here this summer mm -hmm. decided to build a head. So I'm not sure if it's going to stay, but we'll it's here for now. <laughs> but um, this was really struck. I did get to go see the Earth ships mm -hmm. about a year ago, and the patterns that they created out of the bottles were. Have you been? been? You've probably been. I've been to a few of them. They're all different, of course. So where did you see yours? Uh, it was up high in Arizona, and I'm forgetting the name that it starts with D. The nearby Parsh city. No, I don't know. I have to look it up. I'm afraid my memory is not <laughs> what I would like it to be. It'll come to me, but not in good time. <laughs> <laughs> no. mm -hmm. So this is a, another example. This is year two of the students coming here. And so this wool is thick. So that's one that you can always tell is made of straw bales over there. And then over here, this is cordwood. So it's using um, uh, stove length pieces of, of wood. And then again, just you know, using the, the local clay-rich soil and to, to put I that together. And a lot of recycled glass bottles, which they buried on the top. Yeah. Yeah, they can be really beautiful patterns. Yeah. Yeah, this, the whole bottle shell yeah. thing, that was just done with a group of 14-year-old girls that came in after the students and did some decorating. It was really nice. Well, you know, sadly, I cannot taste that because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just a hardcore engineer. Everything talk about practical. But uh, when talk about housing and uh, like buildings, they really need to think about the building. All right, well, then I'm going to give you the, the, the story on this roof, and you'll yeah. appreciate that. So this is called a reciprocal roof. Uh -huh. And they're pretty simple. You start with an upright post, a charlie, and mm. then take each of those poles. Each one sits onto the, the next, and then okay. the last one uh, ties in underneath it, and then you can pull out the charlie and everything oh, cinches okay. together. Yeah, this one is eventually 
like it's locked on the top for yeah. me. It, uh, have well, I'm thinking of the going. vegetable steamers. <laughs> 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 yes, like that too. <laughs> Somehow, yes. And then I like this kind of design because then you there's no need for any nail or That's no right. nail, nail or bolts. Which uh, for nail of bolts they will corrode over time, mm -hmm. which will uh, which you need to inspect quite often. But uh, for this, you do not need those kind of material at all, and no glue. Yeah. Yeah, they're um, and they're very elegant. You don't need the mm -hmm. upright post in there to yeah. distribute, and they're so strong. Yeah, has that been done on larger scales and specced, and like, how would it compete maybe with engineered trusses? Um, you know, the the wood span that you would get, you'd have would vary because you need very big poles if you're looking for a much larger yeah, dimensional true. space, but they certainly um, are easy to to engineer. It's a yeah, they work like Hogan's or teepees, wigwams. This is, ah, drying lumber. Need yeah. Solar powered. Okay. Yeah, so you don't, this is our solar wood kiln. You don't need to have yeah, I feel warm inside. <laughs> yeah, outside is actually way colder than the inside, I feel. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I do believe you have, uh, yeah, you have two pieces of solar panels on that corner just to la to turn on the light. No, they run these fans that are up here. So okay. this is our solar heat sink here. Okay. So the way it works is the... Light the, fan, the, the fans are only running when the sun is on them, but this heats up and it pushes the warm air through the, uh, the wood pile and then okay. um, the moisture gets, goes out through the, bo the bottom. There's a little diagram here of it. Okay. And this was uh, one of our first building projects and it was built in response to a project at Dalhousie University where they were building an addition onto the Life Sciences Center there. Mm -hmm. And when they built that, they had to cut 47 trees. And when they cut trees in the city, typically they just get chipped up and they go to the landfill. So instead, they gave us the trees. We built this to show that you could dry wood using the sun yeah. instead of having to use fossil fuels. Yes. And then we milled up the wood and then we built benches with the wood that went back into the building where the trees had been cut from. So there's a nice kind of... the signs on them? The signs are not there yet. And that, yeah. was, that was like five years ago. Yeah. Um, well, but we I didn't realize they actually landfill those trees, which usually are killer. We usually are responsible for destroying our electrical wires. They awesome. should not. They should be used for these kind of purpose. They should be. They could be generating employment opportunities and yeah. beautiful. And things. they can. You honestly, you. Nothing urgent. It's been big. Yeah. yeah. You can. You can. Yeah, you can use these to build houses if you really need. Yeah. Um, it takes much longer, but the, the interesting thing about it is, is that it, it also yeah. creates a value-added product because wood that's dried using the sun instead of using fossil fuels yeah. um, doesn't case harden. It doesn't crack and check as much because oh. the wood dries in a more balanced, like you were pointing out in the other room. Yes. It's more slowly steady instead of a hard shock. That's right. Because everything, if you would give it a shock, it's easier to break. Yep. So more brittle than. Yep. So, we so in really skitter. We, yes. I hate to say it. Yep. I'm very sorry that. Oh, is he? Oh. Well, he was from more than a quarter century. Now he's a counselor. Huh. Well, we're trying to figure out how to use this space better, too. So this, mm -hmm. this was not like this when we got it. We did a straw bale interior wrap of it and then plastered over the walls. But I'm uh, I, Sorry. Hmm? I'm more curious about these saws and these tools. Are they powered by solar? No, they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, although... The, the, those panels that are on that roof mm -hmm. provide about maybe 70% of our wood, our electrical needs. Mm -hmm. Not so much when these are in operation, but yeah, it um, makes sense. But yeah. As long as you can cover the energy at this moment, it sounds great. Until you have uh, batteries in place. And I'm not going to, we don't have time for me to get excited about this, but you should look up Google rocket stoves and you can see that you've seen one of those here. 
for me, this is one of the most important pieces of sort of the you know technology that we're doing. This one is actually code approved. Um, so this, you build your fire in there. The gases get pulled into this barrel here. There's another burn chamber inside of that that recombusts them, kind of like that other stove. The heat spills between the burn chamber and the barrel and runs in a big loop inside this bench of this same conduit here, and then it exits the building. So all that heat that's usually going up the chimney is getting stored in the mass of that bench. So you get fast radiant off of here, and then you get long, slow radiant heat coming off of this bench. So you have heated seats. We have heated seats, yeah. Slowly heated seats. It's similar to a cockle oven. A cockle oven, yeah. Oh. And this is the same idea, um, only a little bit of fuel in there. Uh, Recombust, it has a heat exchanger on it, and then you can also charge yeah, yourself there's a, on it. There's a, I do believe there's a tech inside which generates a small amount of electricity. That's how they work. Yeah, so the... There's a thermal electric material which uh, converts heat into... Oh, yeah. into by electrical metal? energy. By metal? It's a, I think... Semiconductor. A, yeah. Without, uh, without, uh, without any moving parts. Yeah. yeah. The only thing is, uh, it's inefficient. It, it's pretty efficient if you don't have anything else. <laughs> it's all relative. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean the conversion from heat to electricity in that, and you have a heat pump here. Yeah. So. And a bird. Oh, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bi, it's a, oh. it's a two. And a split, mini yeah. split. Anyway, so then we have this space here, and this is where we do the bike powered generators and wow. kind of stuff. Man's, man's ocean. Mass <laughs> toy exists. <laughs> I will um, be very glad to connect you with Leanne Outhouse, I believe her name is, it's at the Department of Energy, and she's sort of trying to um, bring together renewable energy educators. Okay, great. Just so that people know what everyone else is doing and maybe find synergies in it. Yes, we would love to be part of that conversation. It takes us around 20 minutes to take a look around the entire place. It's pretty nice to see these native structures built from local materials. With the solar panels on the rooftop to power this place, it is mostly get the electricity covered. When I see that electric trailer with a solar panel, I know they definitely have a battery system. So I took a look inside before I leave. Haha. Ha. Prince was right. I'll let her know we're here. Yeah. There's a breaker. They have I'd a like to know what you see. Two two kilowatt uh, inverter, the breaker, and this is a battery. Oh, this is a battery. This is uh, a twenty four volt battery system. Something like this is something I want to build, but uh, obviously I would not be all lead acid though. 